Hi there! I'm about to go take a picture of a comet. This is Pons Brooks, and it's probably my last opportunity to do so. It won't be around for another 70 years. I'd like to give you a little bit of the behind the scenes in my both preparation and acquisition of this comet using a DSLR camera. I have to travel to the west side of Tucson in order to be able to find that perfect spot to see it low on the horizon and take its picture. So join me as I try to do this challenge of taking a picture of a fantastic comet. So hang on to your seats for a moment. I'm gonna give you a 20 second ride up to the top of Gates Pass, which is a small mountain on the west side of Tucson. What is remarkable, the reason I wanted to record this, is as you crest the top of the mountain, this is on the east side of the mountain here, but as you go over the top to the west, the view is really just spectacular. I love it every time I go over this curve right here. It just looks like this wonderful drop and the cacti and the sun on this side is just amazing. So it's my hope that those of you that haven't seen the Southwest with the cacti and the landscape enjoy this kind of quick journey. Now I'm going to be making my way to the bottom of this hill where there's a nice pullout that will allow me to set up my equipment to take a picture of the comet to the western sky. To the southwest is actually Kitt Peak National Observatory. Unfortunately, to the northwest and north, you can see even from here the glow of Phoenix, which is unfortunate. So the skies here, being just outside the city limits, are still quite bright. I would put it at a mortal four or five or so. Southwest sunsets are beautiful. This particular location is extremely popular, especially for visitors to Tucson, to see the sunset from here. I've set up my equipment for this evening. On the tripod is the Star Adventurer. It's my star tracking mount. And then above it, I have the Canon RA, and attached to it is a Monster 85mm 1.2 focal length lens. It is just an amazing one, and I think it'll be a great pick for capturing the comet tonight. This is a picture I took right after sunset with my iPhone on my car for the nice reflection. You can see the moon up above, barely a crescent tonight, but going forward, it'll be brighter and brighter each night, making it more difficult to capture an image of the comet. That's why I think this is my last opportunity to do so. This picture looks relatively bright, but this is actually deep twilight. I'm taking flat fields by looking near Zenith with the camera. I use Backyard EOS as my acquisition software, and here's one of the flats that I've taken. Of course, the sky is blue, so the image is blue. I am therefore monitoring how much red signal I'm getting, and that tells me if I'm exposing the flat long enough. Not so long that it saturates in blue, but long enough that I get enough red signal. After flats, it's dark enough to polar align the mount. I use an application on my phone called Polar Scope Align Pro that shows me where exactly to put Polaris. When I look through the polar alignment telescope of the Star Adventurer, I see exactly the same pattern, and I place Polaris in just the right spot. Once I'm polar aligned, and it doesn't need to be precise for this particular kind of imagery, then I turn on the tracking and basically, I just need to wait for it to become dark enough to capture the comet. Here, finally, is the moment I've been waiting for to capture the comet, and perhaps my last opportunity to do so. I settled on 20-second exposures at an ISO of 1000. Anything more in either exposure time or in sensitivity of the sensor, the sky is just too bright, as you can see here. I just decided I would add as many of these as I could together, tracking the comet until it just was in the murk towards the horizon. 
Just to be clear, the comet is above center and the Andromeda galaxy is near the bottom. I also noted later in processing that I had just missed M33 coming into the frame. I would have turned the camera a bit to make sure it ended up in there, but I decided it was too close to the edge to include in the final picture. You'll also see that there was a lot of air traffic, but that's okay with airplanes and satellites. A lot of that comes out of the processing, so it's not going to be visible in the end. So after 137 20 second exposures and many hours of sitting at the computer putting the images together, here's what I got. <laughs>